This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. At least he doesn't have to travel any more than, you know, the same region coming into Fayetteville on uh, on Saturday. Art, appreciate your time, especially on a game day, man. How are you? I'm great, Phil. Yeah, about two and a half hours to Kansas City and Saturday about the same to Fayetteville. So not bad. Not bad at all. So uh, we were getting in earlier on the show about this total turnaround for Missouri State football under under Bobby Petrino because when you look through the history, like you, you got eight wins last year and seven wins had been incredibly difficult to come by for over a decade. You go 20 years back to when the school was known as Southwest Missouri State for the time the last time they'd, they'd won eight games. You know, and it looks like a pretty good team again this year. So w- was it a surprise that Coach Petrino turned Missouri State around so quickly, or, or was this kind of expected? Nobody could say, Phil, that you expect to go from 1-10 and 10 to the playoffs in one year. I mean, logically, it, it would be incremental. You know, maybe the first year, and certainly a lot of belief in Bobby Petrino, that uh, maybe you, you get to the middle of your conference, and then by the second year, you're ready to make a move up toward the top. But no, it, it happened in one year. And after 30 years of not being in the FCS playoffs at all, the Bears have been in back-to-back years. It's, it's just been incredible how quickly he has gotten this done. Well, what was the reception like um, amongst Missouri State fans and the region in general when, when Petrino took the job? You know, I mean, the, the exit at Arkansas, you know, kind of speaks for itself. At Louisville, there was success, but things really cratered those last couple of years. So, you know, moving into to FCS and the Missouri State, a program that, just like you said, is coming off a one-win season, what was that reception like when Coach Petrino took the job? Well, I think everybody was kind of stunned. Uh, first of all, that Missouri State could attract a coach that had been at a Power Five and that it was that coach. But then looking a little more closely, Athletic Director Kyle Motes had worked with Coach Petrino at Louisville in a previous job. President Cliff Smart of Missouri State is an Arkansas law grad and is a Razorback season ticket holder. So there were some some connections there. But the story is that actually Bobby reached out to Kyle about uh, his interest in the job. And uh, so he, he sought it out. He was ready to get back into coaching. And there have been a lot of coaches and media members through the years think that uh, Missouri State's situation is very favorable for FCS. Why don't they win? I mean, got good facilities, a nice town of 23,000 students on a beautiful campus. And there, there are just a lot of things going for them, and, and the missing link, obviously, was, was the right coach, and now they've got the right coach. We, we had Chuck Barrett on, on Tuesday. He, he comes on every Tuesday, and, and we went through some of his experiences uh, working with Coach Petrino when it came to uh, coaches' shows and, and in preparation for everything, and he said he, and he is a, incredibly uh, his attention to detail I mean minute details on almost every aspect of the program was amazing to see what was the term that he used for him I think it was socks to jocks kind of a coach you know and 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 so that means he's you know he's in on everything at least that's what it was like then is that your sense of of what Bobby Petrino is like now that you know with Missouri State that he's still in on every aspect of the programmers or is he delegating a little bit more because it sounds like Sam Pittman is more of a delegator but Bobby Petrino is more of a, of a, I don't want to you know call it detail oriented, but he's kind of got his hands on everything. No, he does, he does. And I had Chuck on my show in Springfield yesterday, and he said kind of the same thing, and that Bobby cared about his TV and radio shows. And I said, well, he does here too. Last night we had the radio show, and he he took note to me about the the microphone that we were using, you know, and the the means of of uh, projecting uh, our sound out into the into the room where the audience was uh, was waiting. So I mean he he pays attention to every little detail like that. He's still that way. That's that's something else. I don't know if I'd pay it. Well, I'd pay attention to the microphone too cuz I'm a radio guy, but you know, they maybe, maybe that's just me. Um you know football really well, Art. Uh you know, I mean, I don't think you'd be on the Chiefs radio network if you didn't know football through and through and covering Missouri State as long as you have. I've heard, though, from 
I mean, people that are football lifers from the broadcast end and from the journalistic end, they've said they've learned things about football just from being around Bobby Petrino. If you could point to anything, I mean, is, are there things that, that you've learned about this sport that has been such a big part of your life for a long time while you've covered the Bears under Coach Petrino in this short time? Don't know if I could cite one example, but I will say that Coach Petrino gives more nuanced answers questions than most coaches that I've been around. I mean, a lot of them will just, as you know, give you the coach speak and, uh, you know, we're going to play him one game at a time and very bland, vanilla answers. And I mean, he actually, if, unless it's something that he, he doesn't want to discuss that's, you know, real strategic, but he will take your little inside football and, and do so in, in a understandable manner about some of the, the plays that they run and why they run them and when they run them. So he's, yeah, he's, he, he's all in on, on just about anything uh, that you ask. Well, let, let's get into this, to this team you got here. And what are there over 40 transfers uh, that are, that are part of the bears uh, roster right now. I know uh, plenty of them coming from FBS programs as well. Um, what, what, what stands out to you about Missouri State two games in? Well, I mean, the quarterback, Jason Shelley, uh, it starts with him. Uh, he's a double transfer, both Utah and Utah State, a kid from Dallas originally, but he's, he's really good. He's a Walter Payton Award uh, watch member for the National FCS Player of the Year. Uh, last week against Tennessee Martin, he had the same number of incompletions as he did touchdown passes, five of each. Uh, makes good decisions, is um, is mobile. I wouldn't call him a running quarterback, but he can run to keep a play alive. And he really has good chemistry with Ty Scott, who was a transfer from Central Michigan last year, who ended up with school record in receptions and receiving yardage. Uh, they've got a great rapport. Now, obviously, the Razorbacks are going to put a lot of pressure on Shelley, and uh, they will give a lot of attention to Scott. And you may have to have some some other plans. But uh, you know, I, I I a lot of the time liken Petrino offensively to Andy Reid, in that on third and whatever, he's probably got a play in his back pocket that is going to work and get you the necessary yards. So he, he knows what he's up against. Uh, everybody's asked him this week uh, what what's going to be like to walk out on that field as the opposing coach for the first time. He said, "Try not to think about it." I'm, I'm, uh, but the, the, he acknowledges there will be a lot of emo- uh, emotions. Uh, that aside, from a football standpoint, he knows what he's up against. But I, I don't think he'll be embarrassed. I mean, I think he'll uh, have his team prepared to uh, give its best effort. What are, does it's, Coach Pittman has pointed this out. A lot of listeners have pointed this out, too. I mean, we know about last year's opener against Oklahoma State. A really good football team the Cowboys had finished, what, seventh in the nation? And uh, right. the Bears took them down to, the, to, to four zeros at the end, man. I mean, is there, is there anything about that game, you know, against a top-ten team and facing one here again? And it's been over a year, and the team's made up differently, but it is the same program, the same coach. Is, is, there, is there anything in the game against Oklahoma State last year that, you know, might, that fans or maybe players or people in, in the media or your radio crew have, have pointed to that say, look, I mean, this happened last year. We're going to play with this team because we did the same thing last year with a team that might be just as good. Absolutely. There's been a lot of talk about that amongst the media and the players. Uh, yeah, they're, they, they've got a guy open in the end zone with a minute to go to pull within one point if they made that pitch and catch, and he was going to go for two. And that's an Oklahoma State team that came within about a foot of making it to the national playoff. So uh, is this Arkansas team better than that Oklahoma State team a year ago? Maybe. Uh, is Missouri State better than it was a year ago? I'd like to think. So I think that that experience of, of playing so well in that environment against probably a similar opponent last year for those that were on the team uh, gives them some confidence that they can hang in there and do it again. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Art, when you're with when you are an FCS program, and we've seen this a lot over the last few years, this conference realignment, shakeups. We've seen a lot, a, a good handful of SES programs make the jump up to FBS. Is that a goal for Coach Petrino and the the university itself to build such a strong program that it has the option to go up? I've kind of downplayed that. Uh, they're they're thinking more of 
consolidating what he has built in two years. They've got a, a south end zone project that they're very vocal about. It'd be about a $23 million project. To, right now, the, the stadium, it's got an upper and lower deck on one side and, and students on the other. And this would, this would close in the south end with uh, locker rooms, mm-hmm. coaches' offices, stadium club, a lot of amenities there. Uh, so they, they think they're going to get that built. Uh, and, and then, you know, you build it up with the infrastructure and you continue to win. And, and yeah, then maybe you look at what these Sunbelt teams have done in the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you think, gosh, I mean, maybe it's possible to be a, a Georgia Southern or an Appalachian State. Marshall's been, of course, for quite some years at FBS. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, there, there are some fundamentals there. And to, to even be having this discussion after 1 in 10 three years ago is – is remarkable what Petrino has done. He's really unlocked the, the potential, I think. Mm-hmm. Now, are you being the voice of an SCS team, you have a better better view of, of how the playoff system with the FCS works than I think a lot of us. And that's been a big conversation now that we know that it's going to 12 in FBS football. And it's kind of been the question, how do we make it work? How do we make the big jump from 4 to 12 what what has been your perspective on having a bigger playoff? You know, every single every single year at the FS, uh, FCS level. Well, I've been for it uh, from the start. I think it's it's a no brainer. I think what is bringing it to fruition now is that people are bored of being the same four or five teams mm-hmm. every time, and and I'm one of them. But uh, you know, that's the beauty of the NCAA basketball tournament. We don't start every tournament with just. Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, uh, like we do for the, the football ones. So uh, I, I think that there is a, a need uh, to expand it. Now, you may end up having the same four in the in the semifinals and finals that you would have, but uh, from a, a standpoint of, uh, of viewer interest and, and money that is to be made from it, then, yeah, I think, I think it's a no-brainer to expand the, the, the playoff at FBS. Well, let's go into what you got going tonight. <clears throat> Pretty exciting matchup uh, in at Arrowhead against uh, in division and really a rival in the San Diego. Well, I still call him San Diego. Obviously, it's tough. Yep. To get that. You still call him that after all these years? Do you still slip up? You know, some sometimes that's like put a put a quarter in the in the swear jar or something for calling him that. I sometimes would still even say Baltimore Colts. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. The one I don't uh, slip up on is uh, is SMS. Although the first game that Missouri State played as Missouri State was against Arkansas, and I called them S- SMS within the first five minutes. But uh, you know, with with time, and we switched radio stations in Kansas City three years ago, and went from the Fox to the Wolf. So you just kind of have to have to roll and, uh, and use the right terminology. <laughs> Well, last week, no Tyreek Hill, but no problem uh, against the Cardinals. Put up 44 points. Mahomes threw five touchdowns. And, I mean, it was just it was just like old times, just without without Tyreek Hill. Do you still think that uh, without him, the offense can continue to hum like they did against against Arizona? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, it's just more of a diversified offense now. And you may be about to go to Bluetooth here as, we, as I get in my car and get things started. Um uh, it may be uh, – it's, it's more diversified. Uh, Mahomes went to nine different receiving targets in that game last week. So it's not all about Tyreek Hill and teams playing a three-deep shell and only three. Uh, now they're going to have to account for additional uh, receivers and not just Ty, uh, Travis Kelsey, but you got Juju Smith-Schuster and you got Mark Quez Valdez-Scantling and McCall Hardman. So uh, I think they're going to run the ball more. They did a little bit last week and then just – uh, be more multi-dimensional offensively, maybe than in the past. Sounds a little bit like uh, addition by subtraction. Could that be the case? I mean, you know, it's a little bit more, a diversified attack is not necessarily a bad thing in the professional game. Right, and I mean, there were. I'm not saying that they're better off without Tyreek Hill, but last year uh, people really slanted their defenses. As this will happen in in football or any sport to try to take away what the Chiefs wanted to do, and that's get the ball deep to him. So uh, now uh, without him, they're going to have to play a little more honestly, I think, defensively.
Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit that's believe b-l-e-a-v 50 that's believe b-l-e-a-v 5-0 bet online where the game starts